In this video, we'll talk about the disconnected architecture of ADO.NET. Basically, once we get the data from the database and if I want to access that data frequently, what I can do, I can store that data in my own, means on client's terminal and after that I can disconnect the connection and I can continue working with that particular data. If required, later I can sync this disconnected data with my database as well. But here we'll just see the disconnected architecture so that we can get a very deep and good understanding about the structures and the classes which we are going to work with this in this disconnected architecture. So basically it is the storage and management of data without the connection as I said. Here in this particular video what I'll do I will create a random data some manual created data will be here and that we will store in this disconnected architecture in, that is in our machine itself like any object of the class takes place. Similarly we will be storing some data in our own machine. Later I can use those particular objects as the data source and can have a very good representation of those data in our GUI application. Now for doing that here we will have to go for the system.data namespace which will provide us all the various classes which we can use for the disconnected architecture such as data table, data column, data row and obviously there will be few more classes which we will cover during the implementation. When I talk about the data storage, all the data which is stored in the disconnected architecture as well will be in a tabular format. So that's why we have the data column and data row that is the row and column format for the data table. So let's see the implementation of the disconnected architecture and we will notice like how we can use all these classes programmatically. So for starting the implementation of disconnected architecture, first of all I have taken the data grid view control here from the toolbox and you can find it inside the data controls. So right here you can see there is a data grid view and I will use this control to show the data which I am going to store in the disconnected architecture that is in the data table. So let's come to the uh, code part and here you can see like I have already written some code in the method called get employee table and inside this before getting started with this event let's see one more thing like I have included the system.data namespace in this code so that I could get the classes like data table, data column and data row. And after that in this particular method get employee table I am returning a data table and I will just return this one alright. So let's see what all I have done inside. So here I have first of all initialized this object dt is equal to new data table and here I just kept a name for this data table. So here in the double quotes I have passed a name called employee and once you have defined a table name after that you can create a number of columns and can add in this table. So that's what I have done right here. So here as you can see DC which I have already taken. So inside this I have taken DC is equal to new data column that is EMP ID and here after that you I just added that particular column. While initializing this data column, I have kept a column name that is EMP ID and in the second argument, I just specified the type which I am looking for for this particular column. If you will not specify the type for this column, it will be of object type means it will not be type safe and you can enter any type of data. So preferably, we will assign a particular data type for the data columns. Now, once I initialized this particular column, later I added this column in the table like dt.columns.add and if I want to give a primary key feature, primary key concept is very same as that of the database. So if I want to do that, I can pass it like this, in this way, like dt.primarykey. So 
after that you can specify all the columns which you want to make a primary key Co combinedly it will be a composite key so it is also available like if you want to make the composite key you can just pass multiple column reference by separating by a comma so this particular column has been added and very similarly I have done one more like EMP name type of string and then I added this particular column again so I, what I'm doing is I'm just keep on using this column data column object and I'll just initialize that object and will add into the table and then I will change the value so in this particular way I have added three columns in this data table that is EMP ID EMP name and department ID now let's talk about adding the rows because once you are done with the columns you will have to add some data into the table so for doing that here I have started working with the DR that is the data row so first of all whenever I'll talk about a particular row the structure of a single row or record will be similar to the structure of a table means if a table has the three columns so in each row those three columns of same data type must be there so how can I get that by using DT dot new row once I say DT so whatever the structure of that particular table is the new row will be of that structure only means it will be having a three columns in the first and last it will be expecting the integer data as it is of type int and in the first that is in the uh, EMP name column you can pass the string so for accessing a particular column of a row either you can pass the indexes like this like 0 is the first column EMP ID 1 is the second column EMP name and 2 is the third column DEPT ID and once you have initialized all you can add that particular row in the table by dt.rows.add so this is how you can add one record if you want you can specify the column as the name also like here rather than passing the index I can pass the column name like this like EMP name is the name of the column so I have passed the same so it's all your choice for the index it will be easy to access it internally but if you will pass the column name it will be easier to understand in that coding part alright so uh, that's all your choice how you want to access a particular column in a table and here you can see I have added four records in this particular table in the very same way alright so every time I'm done with adding one record again I will initialize it with dt dot uh, dr is equal to dt dot new row so again I have added the four records in the same way and once it is done I returned the data table the reason why I return is the return type of this particular function I have kept the data table alright so once I have done all these things I can return this particular data, data table and here in the load method what I have done is I have taken another instance of data table that is EMP table and in this what I have done I just called this get employee table method so that will return a data table which would be having three columns and four records and later what can I do is in data grid view which I have already taken in my form I will just set the data source to the EMP table alright so net now let's execute this one and here you can see like all the three columns with the same heading that is EMP ID, EMP name and department ID, DPT ID along with all the same four records with are being displayed here alright so this is how you can start working with this thing later obviously we are not going to add these records manually by the time we will begin with the, disc uh, the connected and disconnected architecture both we can simply get a table from SQL server and we will fill that thing in the data tables directly we don't have to create such things manually but we actually can understand the structure of a data table in this way like how to add a particular new column how to set a primary key how to add the constraints and a record 
once you will be able to do that by the time we'll be starting getting the data from the database we will be able to get the data easily so in our next video we'll see how can we start with the data sets in the disconnected architecture